Well, I don't think that I need to tell you that today is a festival day. We are celebrating Easter, the resurrection of our Lord. Um, we have been celebrating the body of Christ. And today is that last in that series, we are doing the resurrected body of Christ today. So um, Martin, anything that you need to do for, um, all right, then let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship our Lord to this day.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Almighty God, through Christ you give us everlasting life. By the power of your Holy Spirit, please show us today a glimpse of that new life as we reflect upon your glory and praise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people to the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. <laughs> 
A reading from Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. Truly, I I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people, and to testify that he is one ordained by God, as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins throughout his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from 1 Corinthians. If, for this life only, we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have died, for, for since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through, through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all be made alive in Christ, for each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ, then comes in the, the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in it, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on a third day rise again. Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the, to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. He is not here. The body of Christ has gone missing. Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> you are certain without a doubt that you put it in that very spot. You're sure of it, yet it's not there. And so the search begins and you look and you hunt and you seek until at last the missing is found. Of course, usually we are searching for our keys or our reading glasses or our phones, but today it is the body of Christ that has gone missing. This is why you have come here today, is it not? You heard that the tomb 
in which laid the body of Christ that we laid there on Friday is now empty. And you have come to join in the search for Jesus. You're in good company actually, because there are thousands, I suppose even millions of people that are out today in search of the missing body of Christ. And all have come to the tomb only to find that he is not here. But you knew this. When you set out this morning, you didn't expect to find Jesus in the tomb, did you? Yeah. In fact, you would have been startled <laughs> to find Jesus still shrouded in the grave clothes and laying peacefully and undisturbed behind that heavy stone. Well, if you can imagine your own surprise upon finding Jesus in the tomb, imagine the women's surprise when they got there and heard the words, he's not here. I wonder which was more surprising to them, the two men in dazzling clothes or the disappearance of Jesus' body. Of course, there was more to the men's words than just, he is not here. It's not, he is not here because he's missing, but he is not here because he is risen. I wonder if part of the reason that Jesus raised Lazarus was to provide a context for these very words. Having witnessed the raising of Lazarus with their own eyes, these words would not have sounded quite as strange or impossible as they might have had the women not had the previous death-defying experience. Surely, if a mere mortal could be raised from the dead, the Messiah could be also. The women return and they tell all of this to the disciples who totally think that the women have not lost their keys but have lost their minds. Only Peter gets up to fact check the women's story and he finds it just as they had said, an empty tomb and the body of Christ has gone missing. Now this is strange and you would think after 22 years, I would have realized this before, but I only really realized this last week. And this is probably why lots of people are not going to hear the gospel that you just heard today, but are going to hear John's version of the gospel today. But did you notice that in the appointed reading from Luke's text for this morning, there is no sighting of the risen body of Christ in the text appointed for today. All we have are the men's words. He's not here. He is risen. Maybe we don't see the body of Christ in Luke's because everyone's looking in the wrong place. Remember what the women or what the men said to the women? Why do you look for the living among the dead? Of course, they're not going to find Jesus among the tomb and the catacombs. He's not there. He is not dead. He is risen. And now I'm going to tell you a secret. The risen body of Christ might not be present in Luke's gospel this morning, but he's not missing. I've seen it. Want to know where? The body of Christ, the risen body of Christ, is here in this building. Actually, right here in the sanctuary. Where? Right there in the pews. There is the body of Christ. You are the risen living. Hopefully I'm going to still be living when it's over. You are the risen living body 
of Christ in the world today. You are the eyes of Christ that see not what the world sees, but what God sees. People, individuals, each with a story, a story that is worth knowing. You are the ears of Christ that hear the cries for mercy from the lonely and the injured and the needy. You are the hands of Christ reaching out to pray and to heal and to feed and to raise the dead and the dying. You are the heart of Christ, beating and pumping life and love into the world. You are the feet of Christ, walking where others won't go. You are the mouth of Christ that spews forth the good news of great joy. Christ is not dead. He lives. Come and see. I wonder, will all of those millions who have gone searching today see the body of Christ? Will they too find proof that he is risen and alive just as he said? Just as he promised? Will they be filled with great joy because the body of Christ has visited them? I wonder. The Easter message is not ours to hoard. It's ours to share. Even more, it's ours to be. The women proclaim the good news to the disciples, even if they did hear it as an idle tale. But there is at least one person who dares to believe and to get up and to go see. In the same way, it is up to us to proclaim that good news to the world so that everyone else may witness the living body of Christ. And know that Easter is not about bunny and eggs, but about life and truth and hope. That Easter is not about just a day on a calendar. It's not even eight weeks like we celebrate here in the church, but it's a season of life. That Easter is just not a 2,000 year old story, but it's a here and now reality. Christ is alive. Will you go and tell those who have not yet heard that Jesus is not in the tomb, but has risen? Even more, will you be the Easter message? Will you be the living body of Christ? Will you be the body of Christ to those who have not yet experienced the glory of Easter? Will you invite the world to come and see that the lost has been found, that the body of Christ is right here in the midst of us? Alleluia. He is risen. You are so not convincing. Hallelujah. Christ is risen.
standing together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With joyful confidence, we pray to our risen Savior for the church, the world, and for one another. Lord Jesus, thank you. We hear the story of salvation and are humbled by your patience with your wayward people. We enter the mystery of your death and resurrection in our baptism. We feast on the sweetness of your victorious life at your table. Thanks is too small a word but your spirit searches our hearts and in that small word utters what we cannot express for all you have done and all that you are. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant life. Lord, in your mercy. Our Feed the people of this congregation with the milk and honey of sincerity and truth. Fill us with your mercy, forgiveness, and goodness. Use us to draw many who are afar off into your welcoming embrace. So together we sing, Christ is risen, alleluia. Lord, in your mercy. Our Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants, and provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant peace among the nations of the earth, dear Lord, and impart wisdom, integrity, and holy fear to its leaders. Let the light of your resurrection bring joy, comfort, and wholeness to all people, especially those most afflicted by human malice or natural catastrophe, and bring us all into a right relationship with you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Raise up all who sit in the shadows of suffering. Bring comfort and forgiveness to those who cry out for mercy. Bestow your reconciling grace upon all who are estranged from you and from the loved ones, especially Norma, Bill, Jan, Doris, Ruth, Jack, Jackie, Carolyn, Pastor Joe, Ilga, Manuel, Joe, Jackie, Paigey, Bob, Cheryl, Max, Mike, Terry, Hillary, Zoe, Alyssa, Anne, Billy, 
Pam, Lily, Mary, Robin, Paul, Lee, Randy, Cecile, Andrew, Shirley, Ryan, Diane, John, Jack, April, Mary, Laura Lee, Jim, Danielle, Barb, Nick, Martin, Connie, Maddie, Lara, Logan, Sharon, John, Stephanie, Sandra, and Bill. Grant them your perfect peace, Lord, in your mercy. We thank you not only for hearing our prayers, but also for answering them. We give you thanks for making it possible for Mark's father uh, to come to Glastonbury from Texas, and we will continue to keep him in our prayers. Oh God, we give you thanks. Thanks be to God. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you, especially Nancy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share a sign of peace as you feel comfortable. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with Thank you. 
Let us pray. Living God, you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name, and to join their unending indeed holy, almighty, and most merciful God. You give life and bring new life in your risen Son, Christ Jesus our Lord. We praise you as the God of promise, delivering your chosen people Israel from the captivity and slavery, and giving them new life in the land promised to faithful Abraham. And though they experienced the death of exile, you remained faithful to your promise, sending the prophets and giving your children renewed life in their own land. We praise you for Jesus born of Mary, by the power of your spirit, the firstborn from the dead, who though the exile of his suffering on the cross served as a victim and priest, and through him you have delivered us from our exile and captivity to sin and death, giving us the joys of life everlasting, fulfilling all covenants and promises. Send your Holy Spirit and breathe new life into us and to bless these gifts and bread of wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of our living host, Jesus Christ, our Savior. This same Lord Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, blessed it and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, before we, you, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. We offer to you, most holy God, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, remembering this Easter day all you have done through your passion of resurrection of your Son. In this Holy Communion, you unite us in the sacrifice of our eternal High Priest. Through the promise he made to his disciples, we await his final coming to fulfill all of life and to make new the heavens and the earth. As we now gather to receive this Holy Sacrament of Christ's body and blood, strengthen us in your mercy and grant us the fullness of the salvation and peace through him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. <laughs> Joining with all those who in every time and place have turned to you, we pray as Christ himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
If those of you who are on Zoom would like to join me in the prayer of the absence of communion. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life and the cup of salvation. I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. I am baptized into your death and resurrection. I seek you daily and worship and adore you. Since I cannot receive you in the Eucharistic bread and wine, I pray that you continue to come into my heart and soul, as you always have, through confession and forgiveness, through the proclamation of your holy word, and through the prayer of your people, that I may remain united to you by your all-powerful and ever-present Holy Spirit. Let me receive you and be nourished by your abundant grace. Be for me the manna in my wilderness, the bread of angels for my very human journey through time, a foretaste of the heavenly banquet and solace in the hour of my death. I pray all this, trusting that you are my life, my peace, and my everlasting joy. Amen. Amen. Those of you who have received the sacrament, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, we give you thanks, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. A few brief announcements. They are in your bulletin, um, but Jacob's Well is this Friday night. So um, we will meet here, it's at 6.30, it's outside. I actually saw the weather last night and it's actually, the temperature for Friday is supposed to be up. So we should have a nice evening to do that outside, that's great. There's a sign up sheet out here. We would need some more people from St. Mark to participate in um, singing, juggling, whatever it is that you do. So please sign up for out there to do that. Um, next Sunday, immediately after worship, will be our annual meeting. Um, we'll hold it in here because, um, so that for those people who are on Zoom. So it will be in here immediately after worship. Spring cleanup is the following weekend, or yes, following weekend, um, nine to 12. Hopefully it won't rain for that. Um, church council is this Wednesday. There are no prayer services this week. So no morning prayer on Tuesday or Thursday, no evening prayer on Wednesday. So council will start at nine o'clock. Council will start at 7 o'clock. Council will start at 7 o'clock p.m. on that prayer link. Um, lunch brunch is on Thursday, and Pastor is losing her voice. Good time to lose it, just as the service ends. Um, at, if you ordered plants, you may take them with you. If you don't remember what you ordered, see Dottie. She's got the list. Um, there are plants here, here, here. There are plants out by the cross. So um, take, you're welcome to take your plants with you. Um, as always on Easter Sunday, our um, postlude is the Alleluia Chorus. Um, Martin, you have books back there, right? Yes. Oh, yep, right there they are. They're on the floor. Um, so you can go to the, go to the back, um, grab your um, book, and uh, join everybody in the Alleluia Chorus. Martin, what, you have something to add to? Oh, okay, I wanted to make sure you're trying to do that. 
Um, that's all the announcements. So a lot of it. Best announcement is Hallelujah, He is risen. He is risen in peace. Let us bow our heads for the benediction. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. And Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.